This is Commander Tylan. The UES Promethean has cleared the Mars gravity well. This is Mars Control. You are authorized to proceed to test the drive. Good luck. In the century since humanity discovered and unfortunately shared hyperdrive with other civilizations, there has been an unending race to explore, expand, and survive in an increasingly hostile galaxy. It is unfortunate that the malevolent Dringent Empire were the ones to discover the subspace streams. With subspace streams, distant sectors of the galaxy are instantly reachable. Now, the battle for the galaxy is on. Hey folks, welcome to Galactic Civilizations 4, Supernova. This is the uh, Supernova version on Steam. And yeah, I'm going to play this one. I'm, I actually had a quick look at this uh, when it was released last week and just sort of muddled my way through it at the start and really, really liked what I saw. I thought it was a really, really good game. Um, I'm just going to drop the sound volume here a little bit. Da, da, da. So yeah, I really like what I see with this game. I think it's really, really good. And... I want to play it more basically and this is not going to be one of those games where you're going to be watching someone who's an expert at the game straight off however I have played it more offline now and I've got my head around it a little bit more so I should be a little bit more competent at the game than I was when I first sort of did that kind of first look series over the weekend so at the moment uh, the game is still we're still constrained basically to either using the custom civilization oops oh there we are look so it's, I accidentally hit the generate button <laughs> Uh, whether to use a custom generator or whether to just play with the humans and yeah look so I actually I accidentally just left to type a short description into the AI generation thing and it came up with this thing this is really good by the way um, it like I'm just gonna show you how this works so let's say we, we want what you can do is you can type in this and it basically works like chat GPT I think it's a it's a variant of chat GPT and uh, that they've trained with their own model so um, so we can say a, a race of ravenous cat girls with huge swords. There we go. And then you can just kind of, you know, you can give it all these different things and then click generate. And what it will do is, <laughs> like, uh, it will come up with a civilization description for you. So the feline van vanguard warriors are, a f here we are, look. Uh, in the far reaches of the galaxy, a fierce and feline race has emerged. Known as the feline vanguard warriors, they are a force to be reckoned with, feared for their ferociousness and cunning tactics. With razor-shot claws and massive swords, these catgirls st strike fear into the hearts of their enemies. Their agility and speed make them formidable opponents, and their unwavering determination ensures victory in every battle. The universe trembles at the mere mention of their name. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, like you can just, and then it will come up with a picture as well. And at the moment, there's not that many pictures. I think what's happening at the moment is Stardock are just sort of updating this every couple of days, or it might even be every day, uh, but it will come up with, you know, some images for the uh, characters that you've got. 
uh, like, yeah, the home, home world's called Felis Prime. It's actually pretty good. Like, this technology is really, really clever. I might have to turn this music down just a little bit. But yeah, look at the, at the moment. There's not that many pictures to choose from. So yeah, it's, uh, I think some people have been putting some kind of weird stuff in here. But anyway, yeah. There you go. Look, that's kind of a cat girl, I guess. <laughs> she looks all right to me. <laughs> anyway, uh, let, anyway, just trying to get away from my sordid fantasies. Um, what I'm going to do with this game is I'm just going to play as the Terrans. Okay, so I'm going to go. We're going to play as the Terran Alliance. Um, I'll let you guys have a look at the custom civilization stuff. Um, they, I, I believe that Stardock are going to be gradually unlocking all of these races um, in Supernova. Now these are all available already in in Epic. So if you've got the Epic version of the game, you'll be able to play um, a lot of these. I think most of them. I don't know which ones were in the original game and which ones are in this updated version of the game. Uh, so I, I can't answer that question, but at the moment, anyway, we get to play as the Terran Alliance. So uh, I'm just going to quickly go through these. Uh, the Terrans are basically just humans, okay? This is, uh, I think, is it D.W. Bradley? Uh, inventors of the hyperdrive and one of the youngest races on the galactic stage, Terrans are known for both their professional, uh, professed love of diplomacy and their proficient use of violence when that diplomacy fails. Okay. And uh, humans are known for their flexibility and productivity. They have lower expectations than other species. Okay, so this is good. This means that you can basically, uh, yeah, you're going to have higher approval. If they've got lower expectations, then they're going to be less reliant on luxury goods and entertainment, that kind of thing. Uh, this also goes well with their explorers trait here. What this means is you can kind of get, you can get a lot of planets colonized a little bit more, like a lot more easily, I'd say, with, uh, with the humans. They're also inspired, so an additional leader is available for recruitment. A leader's cost 25% less to recruit. Uh, we, game, we begin the game with a colony ship and we get a flagship. And um, we've got a cultural focus on innovation. Uh, you'll see the cultural focuses in the game. Uh, now, guys, I'm going to assume that you didn't watch that first series of mine. I think that if you've, if you've not watched that, uh, you, you know, don't worry about it too much. It, that, that was probably of use only now for, you know, maybe people who want to see how somebody who is used to Forex games approaches a new game and you just see me kind of like trying to figure it out. Now bearing in mind that I've played Galsiv 3 quite a lot but um, Galsiv 4 is still a little bit it's still a little bit new to me. I'm just going to drop this music volume just a little bit more because it's just a little bit fierce. There we go. It's a little bit hot as we like to say. Okay so let's pick the uh, we'll pick the Terran Alliance. Okay so um, this is where we get to edit our race and I'm not going to do that. So we've got the leader is DL Bradley. I think you can change this. Um, Benjamin Battle Mode is going to be my name. Okay. And uh, yeah, we start on Earth. You can, you can basically change all this stuff. You can you can mess with it. But I want I just want to play with the Terrans. I think this is a really good way of learning a game is with the you know what would usually be considered like a vanilla faction and i strongly recommend you do that okay we're going to put the galaxy difficulty on um honestly i think i'm going to put it on bright now i've got to be a little bit careful the at least in galaxy 3 the ai was really good so if you if you bang it up really high it's going to be it's going to be pretty hard i, I think i'm going to put it on bright because i am a veteran 4x player um, i found i after that first game i played i went played offline and i played um, on normal and i found normal a little bit too easy actually so i found that the ai wasn't quite aggressive enough i'm going to leave everything else on, uh, as it is i might turn off tech brokering as well because i think tech brokering makes the game uh just a little bit too yeah you can only trade known technologies what that means is you can't grab a tech from somebody and then immediately trade it to somebody else like on the same turn uh, essentially i don't disable tech trading i think being able to tr trade techs is a nice thing one thing i have noticed about galaxy 4 so far is that not only are there a few little bugs when it comes to getting income from enemies i think unless i'm just not understanding the game correctly but there's also um it's a little bit overpowered if you want to sell technologies to people you can get like 50 credits to turn off everybody for the same tech <laughs> <laughs> so I just had this, like you know, kind of spiffing Brit style, like broken economy right, right at the start of the game. So yeah, you can you can certainly cheese the game. I think it's in need of a bit of a bit of a, you know, a bit of a balance pass. Uh, we're gonna leave the galaxy side on size on medium. I think, yeah, it was uh, the tiny was too small. So we're gonna leave it on medium. We're gonna have, I'm gonna put several sectors. This is gonna this is gonna be quite a big game. Now you don't need to conquer everyone to win this game. In fact, if you are the sort of player. 
that really, really doesn't like to have to be at war with people all the time in 4X games, this is your game because you it's very viable to play and win peacefully. You usually have to keep a fleet, you know, to keep people away from you and you will be at war from time to time. Obviously, the more successful you become, the more the AI factions become kind of hostile to you um, to some extent, unless you've got some real, you know, unless you play the diplomacy game well. But typically speaking, this is one game where you can really, you know, play very, very, what's the word? Yeah, very, very peacefully. Okay, now you can p pick how many people you're going to have in the sector. I think with this kind of size of game, this is going to be quite big. There's probably going to be like 20 odd. It's the same 8 gigabytes and 2 CPU cores, or 2 logical cores. Um, I think actually that it's going to be, this game might be a bit bigger than that. Okay, now, yeah, so, like, so we're going to have, it's actually got 22 of 43 players in. So we can actually have a potential of 43 players in. Um, so, yeah, I kind of, I want I want these, I want all of these guys in. And then we'll just have... I want more in as well. Can we can we throw more in? No. Okay. I think it's saying twenty. Is twenty two the maximum? I guess it is. That sounds all right to me. Um, it gives us a little bit more space. It's saying that the recommended is thirty three. Does that mean that we can put in more? Oh, I thought I had this figured out. Sorry, folks. No. Okay. What I'm going to do then, in that case, is we're just going to drop these sexes down to a few. Um. Yeah, this should... Okay, there we go. 17 out of 23. So it's saying recommended players is 18. So it might be a little bit few too many. Um, should we take out some that we don't like? Um, all of these look all right to me. Yeah, I, I, by the way, I really like all the races in this. This game is really immersive with the race. I just want, out, of all the four, out of all the Space Forex games I know, this one is one where you can really... What's the word? You can really feel immersed in the game, I'd say. I think it's really, really cool. Okay, let me just check that difficulty setting because I'm pretty sure... No, I need to put that back up to bright. Okay, and it looks like this uh, actually reset. Let me just make sure that the... Yeah, we've still got disabled tech... Tech broken ring disabled. Yeah, everything else looks kind of all right here. Uh, yeah, so all of this is reset, look. Yeah, that's how I want it. Okay. Like 17, it's saying it wants a maximum of 18. Let's put those guys in. I might put the Korath in as well because they're cool. Okay. Saying recommended 18. We're going to have an extra, an extra couple of players and that'll be fine. Okay, let's start the game. Yeah, so uh, my initial... I my, my initial kind of feelings about this game are that it is on track to being one of the better Space 4X games that's out there. And I don't say that lightly because... Yeah, I love Remnants of the Precursors and Master of Orion 1. I think they're, they're, you know, that's just a really, really good game. And I also love Distant Worlds 2 right now. I think Distant Worlds 2 is in a really good place. But this is a very, this is different. This, this is like a turn-based game, a bit more gamey, um, but it's a very, very good game. All right, I'll let you guys read this through. In fact, no, I'll read it. Despite being the youngest race in the galaxy, the Terrans are perhaps the most dangerous. Inventors of the hyperdrive, it was their decision to spread it to their neighbours which led to the current arms race that the galaxy finds itself in. Although Terrans present themselves as a peaceful and diplomatic people, their reputation is far more mixed. They possess a flair for violence and a willingness to exercise it. Although Terrans find nothing strange about this dichotomy, many of their galactic peers regard it, regard it as alarming and even duplicitous. I think that's a really, really interesting observation about humanity, I've got to say. I think it's a really, really nice, cool little bit piece of fluff there. Okay. Strengths and weaknesses. Uh, Terrans are naturally adventurous with fast, long-ranging ships. Their production capacity and diplomatic abilities are well regarded. Their ability to field large fleets is regarded with a bit more wariness. Okay. So here we go. This is a turn-based game. And it's a hex-based game as well. Uh, it's just not that obvious. Now, uh, this is a big game. Now, we're probably going to have... Look, we've got a lot of star systems and there'll be multiple there'll be multiple planets around each one of these you know so this is a big game and we're probably going to have i think there's going to be another one or two of these sectors and the sectors are linked by these gates and we have to open you know we have to get a technology to be able to get access to that uh we start off with with this flagship which is a cruiser we start off with a, a probe and we've also got um one of these colony ships here as well 
So what we want to be doing first is trying to, we want to explore basically. Now we are on one edge of the galaxy, which is uh, of this sector, which is nice. It gives us, you know, a little bit of protection, I guess. Um, I'm going to be interested to see what this upgraded difficulty setting is going to be like. Now, I I didn't by any means win the other game that I played on normal. So, you know, it might I, it looked like I was winning. I was certainly winning in most of the graphs and I was starting to conquer another nation, you know, uh, just so I could have a look at the, the combat stuff. Okay, so you always start off in a, in a, in a fairly similar solar system when you play as the Terrans. Uh, you don't have to, but that's kind of one, one nice thematic thing for people who like to play in a thematic way. Uh, let's go to the research first, see what we can get. Okay, I am going to turn the... Uh, what do you call it off? The tutorials. Now, this is all the stuff... This is the candidates we've got for research. At the start of the game, you get a... a re you get a research... Well, sorry. Every turn, you get a research bonus, a 50% research bonus for recommended technologies. And I'm, not, I'm usually it's because one of your advisors is recommending that you go for this. So... But it, but it does. It's not the same every time. So don't worry that it's it's not shoehorning you into any one particular research path. Uh, there is a tech, there's a tech library here. Look, which te tells you what all the uh, what all the technologies are and do. Uh, there's also, if we just come back out of this. Sorry, that was the wrong button. If we go into the tech navigator, this gives you a, a series of tech trees. It's split into engineering, colonization, warfare, and governance. Uh, but there's there's multiple categories within each of these. So, um, there's also to consider at the start of the game, you, you want to get leaders in, okay, uh, and particularly you want, a you want a minister of technology early so that you can do better with your technology. Now, it looks like we've got a highly intelligent leader here, and she's also loyal. She's very, very good. Um, now, if you hold down the shift key, these uh, you can actually hold on to these tooltips. It's a little bit janky at the moment, but it's not bad, and uh, they are nested tooltips to some extent as well, look. So you can kind of open up these. This is really, really cool. This just makes the game so much better. Um, we start off with 1,000 credits. Now, uh, the difficulty setting might make our income a little bit worse, but what we're going to do is... Uh, yeah. Uh, Richelle Osh here narrowly escaped an arranged marriage, but she's uh, 10 intelligence. So this is important for uh, Governor of Technology. I think we want to get her. Now, we could get the, this person here as well. Crease... Uh, liberty ideology that's good she's irresponsible with money she's kind uh, plus five social and can't quell protest as a governor and she increases traditional so right this one's she's also pretty good yeah this one uh she's defiant frequently fre frequently defies local customs and traditions these will be to do with these these affect various decisions and yeah she's going to be a good commander so we'll get camille what we'll do is we'll get camille dan yeah, she's got resolve which makes her a powerful commander uh, she's not very diligent, though. She'd also be a really good commander, look. Uh, high diligence is important for commanders and governors of manufacturing-based worlds. Uh, she's not very social. She might actually be better as our commander here. Uh, so what we're going to do, we can get a commander. And we put them into a ship, and then they get a special ship. And there's a bunch of ships that you can pick. So these are like hero units. Uh, you know, that you like might get in something like... Um, Interstellar Space Genesis or Master of Orion 2. Uh, but they work differently when you put them in as ministers and tech, you know, and governors. All right, I think I might put her. Ah, oh, she'd be a great governor, though. Rachel May here. I think she'd be wasted in... Yeah, I, I think I'm going to get her as our, as our minister. Now... Yes, we have got someone who's more intelligent, but th uh, this is going to give her plus one random tech slots and uh, plus nine percent research. And now, if we go to back to this look, back to the techs. Yeah, we've now got three. Look, we've got three um, of these that are picked as fifty percent. That's what she does. So that uh, it it's good to get somebody in that early on if you can. This will allow us to build research districts. We've got the Universal Translator, which allows us to begin, begin communicating with aliens. And then we've got Artificial Gravity, which increases movement speed by one. These are the ones the game's recommending. Um, this is going to take eight turns. There's also Subspace Scanning, which increases your sensor range. Uh, Starbase Modules is probably not that useful at the moment. Space Elevators um, are... So all of your colonies have got these upgrades that they can get as well, Orbital Improvements. And some of these are really, 
some of these have got really good bonuses. Galsiv is about is a, is a game of kind of stacking numbers, right, in many ways. And it's got this wonderful, wonderful planet system where you've got this kind of little puzzle that you, you have to go with, you know, as you, in order to kind of create your manufacturing, research buildings, you know, economic buildings, all this sort of stuff. And adjacent, they get adjacency bonuses. So this is really, really good fun. This is like, this is, I love this kind of gameplay. It's almost like a mini game that you, you get to play, but it's meaningful. It's not just busy work. It's actually really meaningful to the game. Uh, so there's just so much customization. Okay, so we've got a we've got ourselves a governor in here. Um, this is Benjamin Battle Mode, so still haunted by the fact he had to order a retreat and sacrifice undefended civilians. Uh, so yeah, he's giving us a whole bunch of bonuses: uh, plus twelve percent to research, plus fourteen percent to approval, and plus twelve to uh, to manufacturing. And then we've got Earth here, and this gives us the size of the, of, of Earth as well. So. Earth here is one of our core worlds. It's our first core world. And we need to go now and look for other places to colonize. Now, we could either go for... We could try and colonize Mars, which will give us an, a nice production bonus for Earth. Or we can try and get out and start another colony straight away. You've got, to, you've got some decisions. Also, we can draft colonists using this... Using this... Uh, sorry, this executive order. But this, this uses a currency called control. And you only get one of these per turn. Uh, I would probably advise using that to, you know, I mean, you can use 15 to reveal an area of the map if you want. That could be quite a nice little thing to do at the start of the game. So if we wanted to look, you know, like, let's see if we can find somewhere to colonize. I might actually do that. Let's get, yeah, spend 15 control to uh, to execute telescope takeover. Yeah, now I select any tile to use the power. Let's, let's see what, um, let's see what this, what's around this system here. Okay, we've got Illyrium. Oh, look at this. Yeah, so we've got a really nice planet here, Kindar 2. Class 24, which is an amazing class. It's got a little uh, pollution, but it's also got precursor elevation. Hang on, let's just... A precursor elevator, sorry. Uh, so it's a precursor world with a fully intact space elevator. Okay, but minus 25 growth and a minus 2%, uh, minus 2 population cap. Okay. So this is people are going to grow slowly here. Um, but they... So... Yeah, it won't be the it won't be the best place to grow, but we definitely want to grab that because that's a good planet. Uh, we've got Duran we've got Durantium and Illyrium here. Also, there's a ship's graveyard. All right, that's good. And there's a precursor anomaly. This anomaly is a rare and powerful treasure that anyone can do, uh, for anyone that can deal with its powerful guardians. Okay, this is really cool. Uh, do we send our colony ship out for that? I think we should. Let's go and grab that, and we'll start. We want we want to kind of expand our want to expand our influence like having influence which is the the, the the radius within which your borders progress basically or, or project themselves influence is really powerful you can use it as a weapon um and there's there's some cool, nice little tools within the game for which for you to be able to do that man i'm really excited to be able to play this look there's mars as well we can actually grab that now um, because it's only a class 3 planet we don't want to be uh, putting a governor on there we, it doesn't want to be a poor planet instead Sorry, a core planet. Instead, we want to use that as a what's called a colony. And colonies just send their kind of resource, like their production, uh, you know, their wealth and uh, their influence, whatever they've got. They just send it back to the core planet as a supporting thing. This is I, I wasn't sure about this when I first heard about it because I was a bit like, oh, I don't I don't have a problem with, you know, excessive, you know, having lots of planets. But actually, now I've played it. I think I think this is genius. I think it's really, really, really genius. OK, what we're going to do is we're going to send this, uh, our discovery ship out this way as well. Uh, we do want to be getting the anomalies because in this game the anomalies are very very good however uh we don't want to yeah we, we also want to expand explore and to see what's out here okay empty policy slot so we've got tax policies here this is your tax rate which will affect approval and it also you know the higher your tax rate look the less output you'll get as people as your approval goes down you can actually if you want to you know uh if you want to increase manufacturing output and planetary research uh, you can drop taxes down. I'm going to leave it on medium for the time being because money is really important. Uh, you want to be using it to fast track stuff. Uh, we've got a bunch of policies. These are like, these are kind of like civilization bonuses basically, um, and you can unlock more of them using uh, different different research groups. So eventually, you get a big long list of these. Just a minute. Okay, so. Uh, brainstorming will give us plus, plus two research, and this is just applied to the homeworld. 
We can get coerced co uh, uh, co colonization, which will give us a 100% growth bonus but at a minus 5% approval rate. We've got faster exploration, which gives all our... Uh, uh, yeah, all of our ships will have less hit points, but they'll have m uh, more moves. Then we've got Hearts of the Empire, which will give us influence, 10% uh, influence growth and 10% uh, income growth on, on our home planet. Land exploration, land exploitation, sorry. So this will give us 5% plus 5 gross income uh, at the expense of plus 30% pollution. I don't like that. I think that's, yeah, I don't know. That's, that, that's... I think if it's just plus five gross income, that's really hot. not a whole lot. It's a lot to start the game, actually, but it's probably not worth the pollution. Then you've got um, security lights, which reduces crime. I think having research bonus is really powerful in this. Also, the, gro the coerced co colonization. I actually think the growth is even more important than research at the start of the game. So I'm going to go with that one. We're going to lose a bit of, uh, you know, we're kind of forcing people <laughs> to get on the colony ships. <laughs> you know, like, get out there. <laughs> you, you must go. Go and explore the world. Bring back stuff for my for my empire. <laughs> Skulls for the skull throne. Now uh, we get to set uh, choose a region to improve. Uh, not only we get do we get these uh, special these are unique improvements and these ones uh, you get a bunch of these but we can also just click in these in each of these hexes and put in something put in a district basically this is kind of a little bit like Solaris works differently but uh, each one of these will affect different things so we can get approval from an entertainment district we can get uh, gross income for, or you know income from the uh, financial district and we can get manufacturing from the manufacturing district which, which will also give you pollution I, th I think in the start of the game let's just see what we've got here we've got a snuggler colony uh, these are tribbles basically <laughs> these incredibly furry and soft creatures are the dream pets for all the children of the galaxy uh, so this gives you approval and like oh sorry yeah, this gives you a snuggler colony, which gives us a research, which is snugglers. We can use those in diplomacy. Uh, we can, and it also gives us influence growth. This is a really good thing to have on our planet. Now, it's going to take 25 turns, so we don't want to build it yet. Um, I think what we want to do first... Oh, look, we can get... Yeah, plus tw uh, three to manufacturing if we put one of these on here. We, um, uh, if we put a manufacturing district here, look. Now, yeah, I think I think we can't avoid that. Got a prenumbral pre beacon study. Provides a charge that will spawn a creature from space. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, in the capital city, we, uh, this will give us a plus two level to anything that we put in it. So you could actually put the manufacturing district here, look, and we'll get a plus three bonus. But we can get a plus three bonus anywhere. Might just be worth just putting this. Get a plus two bonus to that one. But then we could put manufacturing here as well in this forest, which gives you the manufacturing bonus too. Alternatively, if we wanted to go with research here, we could put research here, then put them in here and here. And then we'd end up with a plus one, two, three bonus in the middle here. So, yeah, you've got to... This is a really, really cool little puzzle. And, you know, you don't... I think you don't have to min-max this if you don't want to. But this is this is the kind of min-maxing that I really like. Right? This is fun. Um, yeah, it's really, really fun. Let's just bang a manufacturing district up first. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rush build it. Because the quicker we get more manufacturing up, the better. Uh, the other thing we could do, potentially do, if we just close that down, is we could get the capital mainframe up at the start of the game. Uh, this will, this is going to cost us maintenance, but it's going to give us a 20% research bonus. Now, the faster we get this out, the better. So, yeah, we've got a couple of these, look. Okay, so what we could do is... Just thinking what we could put it like. We're going to get... We can get a pretty, really pretty big pretty big research bonus here if we if we actually put it here then we could fill it with re, uh, with research buildings around here we could have this as our research place so that might actually be a good idea yeah this is going to give us uh plus two level to research and yeah level one we're going to get a plus th a three percent research this is going to this is going to be really good for us and i'm going to actually rush build this i think it's really important to, to rush build a few bits and pieces at the start of the game um now yeah, we're going for research districts. When when we've got this, we'll actually be able to build research districts in here to increase our research. Um, I actually found that I was racing ahead of the other races in research on the um, on normal difficulty. So I'll be interested to see if, you know, it's going to be a little bit more difficult on this, but I'm still going to push for research because, you know, you can play kind of tall in Galsiv, and that's what I really like about this game. Okay, we should consider colon uh, colonizing Kindar too. Yes, I'm going to do that. 
Order the shipyard to construct. Well, sorry, to construct a new colony ship. Um, now we could get a new colony ship out. The problem is that the fat, the, the more citizens you have, the faster they grow. So you don't want to dilute the uh, the growth speed too much at the start of the game. That said, getting people out to colonize is really really good, and we can actually use this as executive orders just to rush get her, you know, to rush build a colonist anyway. I think what I really want to do is get another probe out quick, and I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna rush build this too. So we're going to spend some money on that. Next turn that will come out. And then we'll get that one going around here. And we're, we're going to do some exploration really, really fast. Uh, after this, I might put a... I might go for the colony ship after this one. And I won't rush build that one. Okay. We've got 673 credits left. Let's see what other leaders we can get up. Uh, we can have a minister for exploration, which increases our moving range based on the diligence of the assigned minister. We've also got a minister of colonization. I won't put that one in there yet because this one increases... Increases approval on all core worlds except our home world based on the social skill of the assigned minister. Uh, so this is going to be uh, diligence. We need someone with high diligence. Now I wanted her to be a uh, our commander. He's got a pretty good. He's got fair, a fairly good diligence. So we could actually get this guy in. There we are. And now he gets plus twenty growth when assigned as the governor. Because so we could eventually, you know, what you can do is by the way you can. You can fire them, and then they bring them. It brings them back here, and then you can put them into a new job. And I, th I don't know, but I think you can just. There's no penalty really to doing that, so uh, you might be able to do some relative, some kind of cheesy things. Uh, okay. Then you got these factions as well. We'll look at this a little bit later on. All right. Gosh, this has been a 30-minute episode already. Uh, so I'm going to end the episode here, folks. I hope you're enjoying the, you know, this series of Galsiv Four already uh, we're going to actually make some moves in the next episode but yeah it's, it's always takes a little while to kind of set the game up and kind of discuss what's going on i've got a better grasp of this game now so i hope you're going to enjoy this with me and yeah i'll catch you in the, in the next episode remember to like and subscribe guys that's really important like i i know i kind of hate saying it because i just think it's really cheesy however um, every time I do, I notice I get loads of subscribers. <laughs> so please take the time to do that. It really, really helps my channel. Uh, my channel's growing really nicely at the moment, and I want to keep it that way. Uh, so yeah, um, share the video around and show people that you might think is uh, interested in it too. And let me know what you think in the comments. If you've got any criticisms, please let me know. Um, all criticism is welcome. And uh, yeah, if you if you just enjoy the video and you want you know you want to express your you know, the fact that you're enjoying it, please do that too, because it's really, again, it's really, really helpful for the YouTube algorithm and it helps my videos get promoted. Thanks, guys. I will catch you next time. Take it easy.